Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath. But let your yea be yea, and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. Is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing songs. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death, and shall hide a multitude of sin. Hello YouTube, hello everybody, welcome to another edition of the Divine Program of the World's History, little book by Albert Close, and now we're approaching the very end of the book and Yerk Lisman is joined with me and it's great to have you with Yerk. I really appreciate your reading this book with me and, and discussing these points because there is a great deal to think about. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me, Brett, uh, to do this reading together with you again. It's been a wonderful journey and we are coming to the end. Uh, isn't there a book that Henry Gretton Guinness wrote about the approaching uh, end of the ages? That's something like that, huh? the approaching end yes. of the book reading that we have here right now. That's right. Um, I have been very busy uh, lately on uh, BitChute. I just want to tell the people so that when you don't find me or anything else on YouTube anymore, you can always go to BitChute. And um, I have a channel there that is called Hour of the Truth. I uploaded all the 34 readings from Tom Fress of, the, uh, of uh, Romanism and the Reformation here. Before that, all 99 parts of the Global Vatican, as you can see here. And now I'm starting to um, work on nothing but the truth, the characteristics of Antichrist, 11 videos. So when I'm not to be found on YouTube anymore before, because of censorship, just look for Hour of the Truth. Um, 
anywhere you want. <laughs> anywhere on the internet you will probably find me on Hour of the Truth, Stunde der Wahrheit, Juggler 66. When you use those terms to search, you will always find that. And that's important because we are finishing here, <clears throat> or we are going to finish a book here that is written in uh, about 1916 by Albert Close that deals with real history. And uh, my experience, and probably Brett's experience too, is that if there's one thing that not only Google, but also YouTube and the whole world hates, it's real history taught to the people. And that's why this book, um, The Divine Program of the World's History by Albert Close, is so important. I'm so grateful for Brett to find this book. And that we took the time for almost 60 broadcasts now. I think we are on the 58th or something yeah. today. Yeah. Um, that we have read that sometimes with the support of um, Daryl Eberhardt until he told us that he is not so keen on reading books, uh, at least not with us online. And then with Michael, who sometimes has time and sometimes doesn't, he, because of circumstances today, cannot join us. He will hopefully join us tomorrow when we do the next reading of this wonderful book. And as I said, it is um, I, I thank Brother Brett very much to invite me to this reading and um, that we can do this together. And I only want to point out once again the importance of real history because this is something uh, you can read in the description of the characteristics of Antichrist. It says, we now, and speaking of in that time that we did that, 2015, have the benefit of historic records at our fingertips today. History is behind us. We have proof the prophecies were fulfilled in the exact years as well, uh, as, well as the exact manner the Bible said it would be. As Christians, we now need to take the advantage of these historic records. We need to use the history books to prove these facts are so. Yeah? And this is, what, this is what Albert Close did um, in the year 1916. He took history that he looked back upon and measured everything that was written in the Bible to the true history that happened in the world. And, oh darn, everything was fulfilled accordingly to the Bible. So it is the Bible and the Bible only that gives you the truth. And that is why Brett and I committed ourselves to read this book. And I'm looking forward to, when this book is finished, to continue in the book, The Great Exodus or The Times of the End, the book by, mm -hmm. um, what was it, uh, James Edkin Wiley? Yes, that's right. You're, well, you know, and again, to bring back the point of this Henry Grattan Guinness title, Approaching the End of the Age, I would have never found this book if I wasn't searching for Henry Grattan Guinness's book titled the same title, The Divine Program of the World's History by Henry Grattan Guinness. If I wasn't looking for that book diligently, I had searched and searched and searched on eBay, of all places, um, because there were several copies uh, available And uh, at the time, I had to pay some bills, and I didn't have the money for the book, but then I started looking again. And I think I may have done this more than twice. <laughs> so, I tend to, you know, it's, it's funny how that is, Yerk, when the Lord puts something in your heart and you're, you're seeking after it. It's interesting what comes up sometimes, and that's true with research, too. And you don't have to spend any money to research. No, but that's that's a very important point that you make. That I very often have that I watch a video and all of a sudden in that video there pops up a source that I want to check out. That source maybe is just a quotation or it is maybe even taken uh, a little bit out of a book. And then you are going to look for that book, but because in, instead of finding that book, you find other books with even probably more interesting content of the same or even other authors that you have never heard of before and all of a sudden you are entangled in a search that you don't know where, exactly. you, where, you, where you are left out with. You know, mm. that left me in German with so many different projects that I'm doing for the moment. I think in German I have seven or eight projects running simultaneously at the same time. I'm getting almost crazy about this. Yes. Uh, but I think... It is also a way of the spirit to tell me that well, you know, the devil knows that he has a little, uh, that he only has a little time. I'm all, all, uh, already 53 years old. I probably have a little time also only left. I don't know. Or time when I can do these things. So I diligently do all these works, and one of these works, and I don't want to. Um, 
delay the starting of the program today any further than is necessary. Uh, one of the programs that I'm doing, and that's not in German, that's in English, of course, that is this wonderful book, The Divine Program of the World's History, today. So I suggest that without any further ado, brother, we come to the reading of the book, if that's okay with you. Please, let's do it. Yeah, we uh, have to continue on page 203 in the book or 145 in the PDF here where it is uh, yellow highlighted. Sir Edward Gray's remarkable statement in the British Parliament on November 1911. It's, it's really very interesting where we are going into right now, I can promise you. In the British House of Commons on November 27, 1911, Sir Edward Gray, the Foreign Secretary, made the following remarkable statement, which would almost seem like a comment on Revelation chapter 16. Quote, At this moment it is as if the atmosphere of the world there was some mischievous influence at work. We have been passing this year through a period of great excitement. It is so still. Some countries are in revolution, others are at war. Really, it is as if the world were indulging in a fit of political alcoholism. <laughs> Optimists and pessimists both have their theories and outlook on the future of this world. Past experience has demonstrated that neither, meaning neither optimists nor pessimists, neither class is infallible or even a safe guide. The one class has been mistaken as frequently as the other. The reason is that neither can see beyond the circumstances which, circumstances which are operant in their own day. In the sure word of prophecy, we have an unerring guide to the future. Okay, this is a very important little sentence. And I'm going to highlight it right now. Because it goes back to what I just read to you on the videos that you should look if you didn't watch them on YouTube. They are already uploaded for years and now they are going on BitChute. We now have the benefit of historic records at our fingertips today that history is behind us. We have proof the prophecies were fulfilled in exact years and time and manner as the Bible said it would be. Characteristics of Antichrist. In other words, the author here states the same thing. So you see, the truth is timeless. In the sure word of prophecy we have an unerring guide to the future. In the prophecy history was told us in advance and now we have the history to look back upon and measure everything that happened in history as long as we study real history, not the Jesuitical indoctrinated false history in the, ch in the churches and in the schools and universities to measure everything against the Bible. So the Lord Jesus Christ reproved the disciples after his resurrection for being fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken concerning himself. No doubt, when he comes again, he will reprove the generation then living for a like slowness of heart to believe all that he and the prophets and apostles have written. Our scholars and professors do not believe in or teach prophecy since the days of German theological ascendancy, yeah? the <laughs> higher learning of Germany out of the 19th century that we spoke about earlier. In conclusion, the author says, let the words of our Lord and of Daniel and of the apostles speak for themselves. What Daniel foretells about the last days, we can read about in Daniel chapter 11, verses 40 to, um, to the end, and chapter 12, verses 1 through 10. So, Daniel 11, 40 to 45, and 12, 1 through 10. It starts by saying in Daniel 11, verse 40, quote, that, And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. And then we go into a little footnote, which the author wrote, of course, with the understanding of his time. Remember, more today, 2019, more than 100 years ago. So take this with a little grain of salt. He says, Some expositors think 
the king of south may be Britain. And we know that Britain is no king anymore, especially since the Second World War is over and America has taken over the crown. Yeah? Mm. Britain, which reigns at the time the author writes this book, in Egypt, Africa, India, Australia, and in other lands south of the equator. The king of the north may be Russia and her allies. The present Great War in 1914 through 16 may be only a stage in the closing of the times of the Gentiles. Wars with different grouping of allies may be possible in a few years hence. Now you can go and analyze this from 1916 written into 2019 what we have today. You can find look for a new king of the south. I don't know um, what king uh, you could propose today, which is the king of the south or the king of the north. To me, anyway, the king of the north always was the papacy, uh, surely not Russia. But um, it depends on the viewpoint that you have. Uh, when you go out from Israel, of course, then north could be Russia perfectly, but south could not even be Britain. So, I don't know. And... I don't want to make any suggestions in this. I advise everybody to read the verses of Daniel chapter 11 for themselves and make up their own minds. But we know that the fulfillment has not yet come even of that what the author here in 1916 presents to us in this little footnote. So we continue in uh, Daniel chapter 11 verse 41 where the Bible says, quote, he shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Well, out of the east, maybe we can understand that to be China. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy, and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Especially verse 45, to me, is quite clear this speaks about the papacy. I don't know how you see that, Brett. Mm, absolutely right. Then we continue in Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, because we are reading here verse 1 through 10, with a little interruption that is going to be very interesting, let me tell you right now. And at, the time, at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that time. And at that time thy people, speaking of the Jews, shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars for ever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words, and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. So far we read in the King James Bible, chapter 12 of Daniel, verses 1, through, uh, verses 1 to 4, in chapter 12. And now the author takes over and says, The first 50 years of the 19th century, speaking of 1800 to 1850, marked more progress than the previous 5,000 years in art, science, invention and discovery. Now, read this slowly with me. And think of what happened between 1916, the time of the writing of this book, and 2019. Okay? So I will very slowly repeat and continue to read so that you really have time to work your synapses in your brain to understand what the author is telling us here. 
the first 50 years of the 19th century marked more progress than the previous 5,000 years in art, science, invention and discovery. The next 25, speaking of the time from 1850 through 75 AD, more than the previous 50. And the next 10 to 1885, even more progress than the previous 25. Since 1885 AD, another 25 years have passed away, and really it seems as if the last 25 have eclipsed all the past last hundred, and still the pace increases. Think of 2019. Let us look back and see what we have gained since 1800, when the old order of things of the past 5,000 years passed away. In 1807 came the steamboat. Between 1803 and 1829 the locomotive or quote-unquote the iron horse. 1838 photography was invented. 1844 the electric telegraph. 1846 anesthetics, chloroform, etc. From 1850 on, the ships became iron. From 1858, the electric light was invented. Between 1863 and uh, 1863, we had the iron-clad battleships. 1866, we had the Atlantic Cable, uh, connecting the New World, the United States of America, with the Old World via telegraph. In 1876, we had the telephone. In 1895, we had the X-rays. Also, animated pictures. We had the wireless telegraph from 1896, the, the wireless telegraph after just 30 years before laying the Atlantic Cable. From 1900, we had the submarine, and 1907, we had the aeroplane. And between 1875 and 1916, modern machines stops Shops and, uh, and engineering develops in thousands of ways undreamed of by our fathers. Automatic machines are almost human in their subtle intricacy and accuracy. Now what about to say of that in the year 2019, where everybody speaks of artificial intelligence, which, by the way, is no intelligence, don't get fooled by that term, and the kind of robots that we have today, even the kind of robots that you saw some, let me think, almost 40 years ago, when the very first Star Wars movies came out. That was at the end of the 1970s, wasn't it? And mm -hmm. 1970s, begin 1980s, so 2019, that's almost 40 years ago, mm -hmm. since the very first Star Wars movie came out with the robots R2-D2 and 3CPO. Huh? Think of what the author tells us here between 1875 when he speaks at automatic machines are almost human in their subtle intricacy and accuracy, how that has developed today. 1907, the aeroplane was invented. Less than a hundred years later, a quote-unquote spaceship was invented to fly in outer space and return safe to Earth. Yeah, Until these... American built Discovery and how this name of the space shuttle all was called all of a sudden was set apart. And oh, yeah. what is true of that story, whether they even went to space, even if there is a possibility to go to space, or they were just floating around somewhere above the Earth, and whether the Earth is flat or the Earth is round, I don't give a rat's ass on that point. But the progress from the invention of the aeroplane in 1907, as we read, to 70 years later, because it was at the end of the 70s, begin of the 80s, that the space shuttle was um, launched into the air, as far as I remember. The giant steps, the real giant steps, quote-unquote, mankind has taken in that time, surpasses long, I think, everything 
that the author tells us here between 1800 and 1850, between 1850 and 1875, and between 1875 and 1885. So he says here in 18 through 1850, the inventions and the progress we've made was bigger, or was more progress than in the last 5,000 years. In the next 25 years, the progress was even bigger than the one before. And then we had even more progress in this 10 years between 1875 and 1885 than the previous 25 years. So that is more than in the first 5,000 years of this earth existence put together, including then everything that has been invented in the last 75 years before this in 1875 through 1885. Now think where we stand today. Isn't that a sure sign that the devil has a short time, that he pushes his agenda as fast as he can, that even normal man cannot keep up with it anymore? Mm -hmm. Why can man keep up with it anymore? Let, let's have a little conversation about this, Brad. Yep. When, when I was young, I was not a technical freak, I have to tell you. But when the first cell phones came out at the end of the uh, of the of the 90s of last uh, of, of last millennium or last century, whatever, I was away with the with the cell phones. I could use them. I was um, I, I I was away with the technique. I understood the technique and I used the technique. Uh, today in 2019, I don't own a cell. Uh, I don't own a smartphone, and I do that by choice, not to have one. Uh, for several reasons, and I don't care whether you agree with me or you don't agree with me. I agree with myself to not have a smartphone in my in my house. But the progress, the computer technology made, the internet technology made, the information technology made, uh, including um, personal computers, laptops, tablets, smartphones, and all that what we have today. When I was young, I was laughing with the older people. Well, look at this. This is so easy, and you just don't want to. You, you just don't want to go along. Well, today people are laughing at me because I can't go along with that anymore. I don't <laughs> understand that yeah. technology anymore. Oh boy! All of a sudden, I'm in the shoes of my parents or my grandparents at yeah. that time, and I just don't get it anymore. Of this technical advance um, advantage that we are so-called giving. It's quote, unquote, strange, Jerk. I must agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't don't use a, a smartphone either, although I do have one. I have two now. I only use it when I need to use it. You know, they actually started doing something called 5G in downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota. And um, I forget where it was uh, some months ago. Uh, you know, uh, it was, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, it was it Dabu7 or someone put up a video about that. And they're using us as guinea pigs. And people just are, are waltzing around, just not a care in the world. I got my 5G, man. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. You know, you can live in that kind of reality if you choose. But, uh huh. You're frying your brains, man. You know, uh, you can do things like that for a while, but they have repercussions. And that's my main concern, Yerk, is the repercussions of this technology. Yeah, they are and selling, not only that. They are selling over here in Europe for the moment the licenses for 5G. So, yes. That, that has started here too. And, uh, uh, wasn't it this uh, True Stream Media channel that did some videos yes. about that? Sure. Um, yep. I, I can really, I can really advise the people who don't know that channel, True Stream Media, uh, to go through that channel. It is really a very interesting channel. We can have a look at it if you want to. Um, I'm sub to that channel, so. Well, that's a really good point because you know that this is the point we're trying to reach right now. Is um, I mean. <sighs> The amount of, I mean, talk about the iron weight of Rome. Just think about all of this history that is just completely eradicated by this ideology of uh, technology. 
I mean, you know, you look at technology as just an ideology. Uh, it sells really well. People buy it. They really have wonderful videos over here on their on that channel. And the Minds of Min is a documentary of almost four hours that I haven't watched yet. But you know, they are uh, they do they don't do too well with the uh, with the. Uh, um, Videos on uh, on the secret societies, though I don't think do they, Yerk. Uh, I forget the the one guy on that channel. I forget his name. He he did a video on uh, uh, the Illuminati or something. It was not very good. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> but not. I mean, in in terms of their technology research and stuff like that, they're spot on. But. Yeah, when you look the, at these last videos, are we still lost in the cave, speaking about mm. uh, Plato's cave and, and something like that? Um, do we have cognitive liberty? You know, they are uh, they are talking in this video about the technical advancement um, exactly. that we're having right now, that uh, machines can um, come between our uh, brain synapses, mean you think something, and then you're giving the order to the tongue to speak what you're thinking, and these uh, computer devices that they are inventing, they are intervening in that moment. Ooh, this is really dangerous territory. What they're exposing here is uh, is becoming evident here, Yerk, where I live. Uh, in, in the younger people, they just don't talk properly. They don't know how to communicate properly. This is a huge issue. Yeah, but this is going to be thought control. They're, That's my point. Is I mean, like, people, yeah, people are speaking right. about people are speaking about uh, freedom of speech. But I mean, how big are you going to make thought. the bubble? You know, you make the bubble so big that you know, if you pop that bubble, man, <laughs> you'll yeah. never recover. Uh, when you look, for example, at this video, this is one that I've watched completely. Where does it end? New Monarch Brain device approved for ADHD. This is uh, this is really great research they did. And also this one, do people realize they are creating their own overlords? I watched it with another channel. I sure. watched that completely too. You know, I'm, I'm not promoting this channel in the way, hey, look, they have 500,000 subscribers and they have uh, 1.9 million co uh, views on one video alone. They are wonderful, blah, 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 because uh, they are not Christian. Yeah, uh, that's the problem, Yerk. They they don't measure everything well, they, against the Bible, and you can see that, of be course. They weak, weak, uh, weak in that have, regard. They have a channel here. They have a channel here that is um, uh, face like the sun. They promote that, or they oh, promote boy. Corbett Report. J. Dyer. Yeah, or... yeah um, but you cannot you you cannot be Christian and also support channels like these, and you cannot be Christian and do the work they do, but the work they do. Again, uh, away from the fact that that is not biblical, what they are speaking about, is very, very interesting. Uh, the point is, of course, and that's something these guys probably don't like to hear. Um, it is Aaron and Melissa Dykes. Yeah, they are a couple. Yeah, the, these two, mm -hmm. they are married, mm -hmm. I think, even. They have this channel. Sure. Um, what they are doing is on a, in, a, in a very subtle way, and I probably the, they don't agree, but <laughs> I, I guess Brett will agree with me. In mm. a very subtle way, they are doing fear mongering because they tell you what kind of a tsunami of technical development is all coming ahead of us and how bad it's going to be in this world, but they don't come with a solution. Yeah, that's it, Yerk. Thank you. Yeah, that's why, I, you know, I subbed to them a while back and I just couldn't stand it anymore. I, I just couldn't. I mean, I don't know. They, they do great research and uh, don't get me wrong, they are really good in that regard. And, and it's good to have critical thinking. I, I mean, I have a playlist on critical thinking and you can find some of their videos on there. But in terms of really giving a solution, Yerk, you nailed it. There is none. And as we know, Brett, the only solution that we have lies in the word of God and lies in the liberty, in, in, in the truth yeah, with which Jesus Christ has made us free. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life. If you don't have Jesus, videos like these will upset you because you will... Well, get... and not only that, Jörg, but I mean, in terms of, of looking at this this 
paragraph that we read just a little earlier about the 50 years of the 19th century. I mean, Yerk, if we sat down with the encyclopedia and went through some of these incredible things that are in art, in science, invention, and discovery, we could find and nitpick this apart that that a lot of these architects, may I call them, these rulers that live today, these Freemasons, these high-level occultist people that seem to think they have the power to, you know, they're running on Satan's power, basically. They're running on Satan's principalities. That's my and that's point what the Bible's telling us, right? That, that was my point, because the Bible says that the devil knows that he has but a short time. Yep. And that's that. That was my point. When we see what uh, progress, quote unquote, progress mankind did between 1800 and 1850, where the author says that it made more progress in this 50 years than the 5,000 before, and in the next coming 25 years the progress was even more than in the last 50, and between 1875 and 1885 the progress was again more than in the mm -hmm. uh, bef 75 years before. There, that is only proof of how desperate the devil is. Right, because right, it is but the he's devil cherry picking. It he's is the cherry devil, picking. It is the devil who gives the power to these people, right? Mm -hmm, the Bible that's says right. the Bible says that the beast was given the power by the devil. Yeah, the dragon gave him its power. Revelation thirteen. Who are we speaking of? We are speaking of the papacy. We are speaking that's of the right. Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican. And the Roman Catholic Church and the Vatican control all of the papal knight orders, whether it's Knights of Malta, Knights of Columbus, Knights of St. Gregory, Knights of the Golden Circle, Knights of this, Knights of that, or it is Freemasonry, all controlled by the Jesuits. Yeah, They all have the power from the dark prince of this air, from the prince of the air, from the god of this world, as the Bible calls him. Mm -hmm. So everything that is invented there, and and that's the, that's the beauty of it, everything that is invented there has a pur has a purpose for good, but also has a purpose for bad, and we are only given a small purpose for good, and we will experience in the future the big purpose of bad because that's what they actually use it for, and just give you the example of a cell phone, to have a device like a cell phone so that wherever you are you can be reachable means everybody can reach you you can reach everyone you can write a text message you can telephone you can communicate all over the world with people is in itself a wonderful invention but they mastered it in a way that it is bad for your health because they wake with waves and frequencies that are bad for your body. And your body is the temple of the living God. So they are attacking with these devices your temple. They are attacking God. Because you can use everything for good and for bad. And because these things are given to us from the Antichrist system, what do you think the Antichrist is his intention toward us? Good or bad? Please, yep, Brett, when you have something. something else to say, I didn't want to cut you off. By no, the... you're spot on, Yerk, because that's what the listener needs to really uh, grasp is, you know, well, well, why is it so important to study all this history? Well, it's because that's where the origins are at. If you really want to understand the foundations, you have to study history to, in order to verify it. And... You know, that's one of the most important things about the King James 1611 Bible. It's the authorized version. It is the version of the Bible, the text of the Bible, the Word of God that our ancestors in the faith, our brothers in Christ that we will meet when we make it to heaven, provided Lord willing we get there. See, they're all going to be there multitudes, way beyond any kind of figure you and I could ever contemplate. Let's not concentrate on numbers. Let's concentrate on just the facts. Let's get the facts down because it's really, really important not to lose sight and be sober-minded 
and diligent to study. You study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. And memorize your scriptures. Find the ones that ring and resonate with you. This is what aggravates me so much about um, a lot of the body of Christ, Yerk, is that, you know, there's so much perverted music and perverted uh, ideology stuff going around that people often neglect the truth because uh, it's been tainted by some ideology or some um, false prophet or something. And it really does a lot of damage to someone if you let, you know, and I, I've run into this in my life too, where I've believed a lie. I believed someone's lie and then I took it into my own bosom. And what does the Bible say? Can you bring fire in your bosom and not be burned? Of course you're going to get torched. But you know what? You learned a lesson, didn't you? I did. Happened to me. Nothing wrong with it. It's just one of those lessons. And I think, I really think, that some of the best lessons in life are the most painful ones. They stick with you. You never forget them. They when shape you. When you're a little child and you put your hand on the stove that just yeah. cooked a pot of water, how many times do you think the same child will put his hand on a stove? Probably only one time. So we have a saying, gebranntes Kind scheut das Feuer in German. That means a burnt child uh, excuse of the fire. Yeah? is shy of the fire. That's how you learn your lesson. And many lessons you are not learning or experiencing with physical pain, but with psychological pain. And let's face it, we are born into psychological pain in this world because mm -hmm. we are children of God from the moment when we are born. But we were born into a world of lies. We were born into a world where the Antichrist reigns. We were born into a kingdom of deception. And in the kingdom of deception, to speak the truth is a revolutionary act. This is kind of a quote that Eric Arthur Blair said already some years ago, who you probably more know under the name of uh, wow. Orson Well, uh, uh, not Orson Welles, uh, George Orwell. <laughs> That's right, uh, Jesuit-controlled puppet, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jesuit-controlled puppet who worked more than 20 years for the BBC, yeah? the British Broadca Broadcasting Company. Um, the, point, the point is that when you are, as a true child of God, are born into this world of lies, the devil takes the advantage from day one to indoctrinate you with lie, 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 lie over lie, and you will never see the truth until... God finally pulls you to his word. And his word, the Bible, and with that I close this little circle that Brett just opened. Without that Bible, the authorized version of the 1611 King James Bible for English-speaking people, you will never come to the truth. So you will do what is determined in uh, the book of Romans, in chapter 1, where it says, ever learning and ever come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah? Only when you get to the Bible. And why is the Bible authorized? Why is the 1611 the authorized version? It is not King James who authorized these. It is surely not the papacy who authorized these. No. It is all our ancestors that Brett spoke about. All the yep. people the last few hundred Multitudes. years who read and studied the Bible and spread that Bible, they authorized the use of that Bible. That's why it's called the authorized version. It is authorized by the layman on the street through his reading and through his following of what is written in there. And that's what yes. we got to do. Obedience to the word of God. Yes, Yerk. And sadly, so many, oh, so many false prophets today. It's just, it's incredible, you know. And that's the problem is when you start focusing on that, then that becomes, the truth uh, actually gets uh, a bad name because of it, you know. So we're not focusing on the true word of God when we're focusing on all the liars all the time. And, and we're Satan's focusing on throwing all the betrayed it Bibles. All yes, exactly, Yerk. Yep.
so we got to be straight up with everyone, uh, you know. And it's hard to do with the youngsters, you know. They they're just not learned enough yet. They they got a lot of lessons, and I'm sad to say they're going to be painful lessons. They're going to get hurt, but that's the way you really learn. In this technological high standing world that we live in today, we just have to understand that it is like it was the same all throughout history, all throughout the last few thousand years, the world is in existence. It mm -hmm. is not because something is new, something is better. Absolutely right, Jörg. That is that is the truth. We got to look at the foundations. We got to study those foundations and understand where our true faith comes from where is the true faith coming from how is it that we can obtain that faith today how is it that we can be grafted into that tree isn't that the most important thing in life yeah that wonderful olive tree yeah that jesus came to die to save us from our sin that we committed it's incredible so what a blessing, Yerk, to be here and to discuss these points on this, uh, yeah, this really troubling day and age we live in today. And we're looking back now, 100, year, 100 plus years ago, 103 years ago, of what author… Of the writing of, the writing of this book, yeah, and even 200 Author years Albert to the, Close put together, yeah. Mm -hmm. And even 200 years, uh, almost 200 years or more than 200 years after the beginning yeah. of the uh, of the time of progress between the beginning of the 19th right. century and the first 50 years there yeah uh, what progress have we made in that time and the, and the question that you have to ask yourself when you just look back is was all that progress good was all that progress positive and you can only answer that question when you have the bible to measure it against and then you will see mm -hmm. that we are going actually deeper and deeper into the pit Instead of coming out of it, instead of yeah, that's right. Good point. Instead of Good choosing points. the true way, Jesus Christ, who is the only shepherd, who is the way, the truth, and the life, and His small path is the only path. We are all brought down on the yellow brick road because of the inventions of the technological society we live in today. And the point is that when you don't keep up with the te technological society today, you are closed out. You are no part of it anymore. And there will come a time when you can't keep up with that anymore. You will be closed out so far that you can't buy and sell anymore. And I'm not speaking about a hidden mark of the beast or whatever, you know, because it also speaks about that. But it's just because you don't want to follow that anymore. I mean... I well, live yeah, here with in commerce, Yerk, and now we have this, what, Bitcoin stuff? I don't know nothing about Bitcoin, but it's very popular very popular with the youngsters yeah. uh, and all of this technological things. Yes, please, go ahead. The, the point is, I live over here in Belgium, and they are going to start to bring out uh, identity cards with uh, biometric uh, identification oh, devices. Oh, boy. This is where we're going with this, year. There's nothing more than I hate than this word. I'm sorry. Biometric. I'm, I'm only 53 years old, okay? That's not that old. But all my life, I know one thing. If you want to take my fingerprint, I must be someone who has done something wrong. I didn't do anything wrong, and people who is, whose fingerprints are taken are the ones that are taken down to the police station, you know? I don't want to be taken down to the police station. I didn't do anything wrong, so why should I give you well, my fingerprints? Why should I give you my iris print, my eye print, and identify myself via my eyes? That's a very good point, because what they're doing now with these laws, Yerk, that I know of, is it is no longer uh, uh, grandfathered in that you have... Um, what do you call that? Um, uh, you don't own the biometrics. The biometrics are owned by the governments. Mm -hmm. yep. They're used by the governments. They're not used by the common people. <laughs> They're worthless to us. Although we think that we're getting security. <laughs> what does the Bible say about peace and security? 
what what did the uh, what did the former American president say about peace and security? Oh boy! When you Here give up your go. peace, for, when you give up your freedoms for more security, you will lose both, right? Something like that. Oh yes, Jurgen. I was listening to this uh, this um, um, lecture, or uh, was it a speech that uh, the the former president made before he got elected, uh, John John F. Kennedy, uh, he made a, a, a speech about the separation between church and state. You can look it up and listen to that whole thing. I mean, it, he even talked about reservation, like mental reservation. Mm-hmm. He knew what he was talking about. He knew he was addre- He knew what he was addressing. I think he knew a lot more than he ever said in public. Well, I think it is very important to state that wherever you have a a, a combination of state and church, you will end in a totalitarian system. Look, I'm not trying to say that John F. Kennedy was some kind of savior or something. Come on, no, he, he just called a spade a spade. Yeah, that's all he did. He was willing to tell us a little something. Not much, but a little something. He was a Knight of Columbus. He was a Roman Catholic. But it is not on us to judge because he did a lot of things wrong in his life. He did a lot of things good in his life. But he will stand before the judge, the almighty judge, the only one who is the real judge. He will stand before God. And God will see into his heart. And when God sees into his heart and finds it in his heart to forgive JFK because he really repented of everything that he did wrong, then he will do so. Yeah, We can only, as Jesus Christ said, measure them by their fruits. Yeah, We cannot measure them by That's the right. things they say. We can only measure them by the things they did. Well, JFK did a few things, and those are kept records of, that were pivotal, to his survival, or should I say deadly to his survival, because of the way he did them, he was sacrificed. That's right. It was a sacrifice they did sure. on uh, on uh, on the square. What, what's it? What's it called there? Um, oh in, yeah, in Dallas. I name there too. Uh, I don't know the name off off the top of my head here either. Yerk, and it was but... on the twenty second of November, twenty two yeah. plus eleven is thirty three. You know, yeah. uh, Dealey Plaza. It was called. Yeah. Dealey oh, Plaza. who was saying that there was three bullets involved too? Anyway, uh, let's let's not even yeah. dis- let's not even discuss that. The point is that he was sacrificed. He yeah. was openly sacrificed, and that should tell us enough because yep, that's, that's right. because that's by their fruits you will know them. And mm-hmm. since you know it couldn't have been Lee Harvey Oswald, a lone gunman, who did that. But that there was a conspiracy behind that, a conspiracy so vast that most people don't even understand it. Why do most people don't understand it? Because they don't understand the very first conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> when the world when the world speaks the about conspiracy theories right. and condemns the world conspiracy theory, they condemn the Bible because the whole Bible is about a conspiracy. It's the conspiracy of Lucifer, the fallen angel in heaven with all his fallen angels against God. That is the very first conspiracy. And if you throw out conspiracy and conspiracy theories, you throw out the Bible altogether. And you know what? Bang! The devil won because that's what he wants. I'm sorry, we're not going to read much of that book today, but I I think this is a very important little broadcast we are doing here today. Letting, Letting just our thoughts flow a little bit in this direction to make... To, to give the people an understanding of what Albert Close says here. Albert Close says that in the first 50 years of the 19th century, more progress in art and technology and all kinds of advancements was made than in the last 5,000 years altogether. Mm-hmm. And when you look That's today right. in 2019 back to 1850, uh, 1850 and you see what progress was made in this last 169 years, well, I'll be yeah. damned. I can't even write that on a piece of paper because I don't think there's a piece of paper big enough to contain all the advances, all the um, 
technical advances, all the progress that was made in art, in technology, in uh, in, in machinery, in, in, in technology, and all that stuff. Uh, I don't think that is big, there's a wall big enough to paint on that. It's just incredible. And it goes on and on and on, and it will increase in speed. And that's the problem. We will lose because we cannot keep up with it. That's and right, mankind yeah. is the one that is left behind then and that will lose out to that techno technological race. And then the few people who control the technology will be masters over all men. And that is exactly what is called the new world order. Because then yep. everyone, everyone bows down to the little god in Rome who holds the strings all together. You know, that's the point yep. that we are going to. Yep, the hierarchy to the nth degree and then some. It's absolutely monstrous. It's wrong. It it's all totally way off. Yeah, it all comes out of the devil's devices, and it's the devil yeah. who rules this world. He is the That's prince right. of the air. So why do we have all these quote unquote frequencies with our cell phones? What is that? Those are waves going through the air, and who is the prince of the air according to the Bible? The devil. Yep. Have you ever thought of that? In that regard? Of course you could use an invention like the cell phones for the good of mankind. But because the devil gave people in this world the power to invent those things, he made them uses in the bad sense. And that's what we are today dealing with. And the next thing that we have to deal with is this G5 that Brett mentioned about half an hour ago. Because um, that's yeah. the next step. And after the G5, what is the step that comes beyond that? Who will ever be able to keep up with all that? Very important. Very important. Who will Whoa, ever be able to keep that's up a good with point, all that Yerkin, stuff? They're, they're as talking long about self-driving cars with this 5G? Yeah, listen, the, the sentence that I just <laughs> wanted to finish is, who is, ever, who is ever going to keep up with this technology as long as he has the Holy Spirit in him? Because the Holy Spirit doesn't lead you into following this anti-Christian technology. So at a certain moment you have to take a stand. And you have to say, okay, I can live with it, that I cannot follow all the stuff in this world, because to me, following the Holy Spirit following Jesus Christ, walking on the small path, to me, is more important because I don't care about my physical life. I care about my eternal life. Paul said it once, and I have that on Skype, in German. It says, to me, Christ is life, and to die is gain. Philippians, that's what Paul said, mm -hmm. Philippians one twenty one. Yeah? So that's I'm right. not saying that we have to give up life here without a fight or whatever. I'm just saying don't hang on to life and don't care if you can't keep up with this quote-unquote life in this earth because what you have to keep up with is your guidance of the Holy Spirit. That is important. And all the material stuff in this world is of no importance at all. But that's how the devil wants to get you. Well, Brett, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite done with what I wanted to say, and I think it is too late to continue in the book because we are almost at an hour. I think this was a wonderful little broadcast introducing us into next time, maybe going a little bit deeper into this, but I think this little... Uh, this little paragraph when the author spoke about the time between 1800 and 1885 altogether here and all these inventions that are mentioned here I think it was important for us to make this very clear to the people where this all leads up to because that's mm -hmm. what's it all about the divine program yes, of the world's history yes. has a goal uh, the history of this world has a goal and the goal for every individual, for every Christian is, 
to be in the end with Jesus Christ. And you can only be with Jesus Christ when you know Jesus Christ. And to know Jesus Christ you have to learn, read, study and live the Bible. And for that, go to the 1611 King James Bible, the authorized version, the only true reserved Bible in the English language today in 2019. And join us next time for a new broadcast on hopefully a little bit more reading of the wonderful book, The Divine Program of the World's History by Albert Close. I'm going to leave it to Brett for the closing remarks. Thank you, brother. Oh, you're welcome, Jörg. I think we could do two sessions on this one paragraph alone easily, really easily. I mean, I don't know about everyone else, but I'll tell you, when I was little and... Uh, Boy, I, I mean, I could just go on all day on this stuff. I really could. But I guess, Yerk, you're right. We should probably cut it because it's been an hour. And uh, we'll be looking forward to continuing into this uh, next time And the Divine Program of the World's History. Hope everyone's doing well. We'll catch up with you next time. God bless and bye-bye. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your lusts. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, The spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep, that your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. For as ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire.